Well, first of all, I, I have to say the higher inflation is the result of what we call technically base effects. That is, at 12 months distance, clearly uh, we observe the fact that there are certain uh, items which have increased in prices because uh, of uh, um, the removal of VAT reductions in Germany, because of the uh, increase in energy prices, which are mostly once off. Uh, and so, yes, we will have a higher rate of inflation this year, but we are not uh, thinking it to be permanent. Uh, secondly, the strategy really sets up a, a way to proceed. It is not uh, uh, actual measures that are being decided. We will discuss them in the coming monetary policy meetings. <clears throat> but we have decided two things, very important things. The first has to do with the 2%. So it is not anymore a ceiling. It is a, a target, a name, and we, uh, we look at uh, uh, divergences from that uh, up and down with the same uh, attention. It is a symmetric target. Uh, the second is that obviously as a central bank we are very much worried about high inflation so we will certainly uh, avoid that inflation but we also uh, will maintain our determination to fight the risks of low inflation or deflation. Uh, we were successful in uh, fighting them but uh, there was some de-anchoring of inflation expectations. The, if you are close to what we call the lower bound that is where uh, you are in a position where you cannot reduce that much interest rates because you can raise interest rates as, as much <coughs> as you want, well, obviously, uh, with certain limitations. But uh, once you're close there, you really need to have a very forceful uh, policy measure. And this is what we are determined to do, uh, not uh, to uh, stay for longer in this position, but to be able to really to convince of our determination all the markets have price expectations re-anchoring and therefore allowing, uh, it, this may imply for a temporary period so moderately higher uh, price changes than 2% but we are there really to guarantee the re-anchoring and, uh, and so this is, this is the determination we are showing. Yeah, some of your colleagues are calling for a lower purchase uh, rates or within the PEP program or reduction of the pace, would you say that's premature to, to do so, given the well, uncertainty? Well, first of all, we have not discussed this. Yeah. So we may discuss in public, but it's better that we discuss in the governing council. The second is that obviously this is an emergency program which has to do with the um, effects of the pandemic. The effects of the pandemic are not only on the volatility of markets but also on the ability to go back to the 2% aim. And therefore, until we are not well uh, somehow uh, moving uh, towards that target, I think we have to maintain all our instruments and we will discuss them in our meetings. Uh, uh, obviously, this is uh, uh, something that is both uh, data-driven and uh, uh, it's not path dependent, it is state dependent. So this is really what, what we have to do. Observe, understand and then decide. Um, we are talking about forceful monetary policy action to get inflation back to that 2% target, which is now a firm target. So, but in other words, if you look at inflation now, that means that we still need a lot of support for the next years. Is that a right interpretation? Well, it, it, it is not clear. It is, I said, data dependent. It, it, there is still uh, substantial slack in the, in the European economy. Uh, this slack is uh, not equally distributed across countries. The governing council has to look at the uh, inflation rate in the euro area not in single in individual countries. Each country's uh, inflation rates are changes in relative prices, if you want, not in the absolute price level. So, so we have really to, to observe that. We are still now projecting uh, inflation to be at around 1.4, 1.5% in, in, the, in the medium term. So this has to be 2% in the medium term. And when we, it will be 2% in the medium term, we will be glad having achieved that result. I think analysts are very interested about your, the ECB's reaction function compared to the Fed's reaction function, because the Fed is 
actively allowing overshooting for the time it ha inflation has undershot. So uh, how is the ECB's function differing or is it not differing? Well, we are discussed at length on this. There are some of us who think that it's different, some of us who think that <laughs> it's not think? that different. <laughs> uh, I think that uh, uh, we are not uh, having a price level targeting. That is, we are not compensating for what we missed. Uh, but on the other hand, we look, we look to the future, and looking to the future, we have really to realize whether we are far or not from our aim, and if we are close, as I said, to the lower bound, that is, we can not use our interest rates effectively, we have to do all the rest to be very forcefully uh, going in that direction.